video walkthrough on a KZ Sportman Sportsman. <clears throat> we'll start our way in the back. You got cable and satellite hookup. So if you go in something that provides cable, you can hook it here. Or if you have one of those portable satellites, you can hook it up through here. Bumper caps, these bad boys come off. That's gonna be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. That's why they make them hollow and you can take the caps off. All four corners, you're equipped with those stabilizer jacks. Three quarter inch uh, socket on a drill is the quickest way to do it, but they also have, there's a crank for it too. Uh, lubricate these often. And then remember, do not try to pick up the trailer with this to try to get it level. These are just stabilizing jacks. There's a couple cranks. Here's the crank for them stabilizer jacks. If you want to do it by hand, here's a crank. Manual backup for your tongue jack. And then plenty of storage there. This has also access from the bed, underneath the bed too. The 30 amp shore cord. It's your shore cord that will come with the unit. Um, it's about 20-25 feet long. Right next to that, you have a black tank flush. So don't confuse this with your city, and we'll show you your city water in a bit. This is where you can hook a hose up to as you're dumping your black tank, and it'll flush out the black tank the best it can. There's a little, there's a little nozzle in there that kind of sprays some water on it as you're draining it. So speaking of black tank, right underneath that, got your black and your gray. I always recommend dumping your black tank first. Once that's all the way empty, dumping your gray. What that'll do is that gray water will flush out your black tank. Um, the black tank water that was in your, your sewer hose, which this does not come with, that's going to have to be a separate purchase. That way you don't have to carry around a stinky hose. And then I always make sure to tell people, make sure these are closed before you take the cap off. Um, otherwise you're going to get a uh, get, make a mess on you. Water heater, super simple to use. As soon as you guys are ready to use it, just make sure your anode rod gets put in all the way. Screw it into there. Get it started by hand, and then it's inch and a sixteenth is the socket size. Get it snug, but don't over tighten it because you, you want to be able to get it off. And once that's in there, um, as soon as you hook up water to this trailer, it's going to fill, whether it be from your uh, fresh tank or from your city water. And once it's full, you can turn it on. If you want it on an electric, there's a switch inside and outside. You have to make sure this outside switch is on as well for it to run on electric. Um, you don't. There's no switch outside for gas. Just that's the second electric switch. Besides that, I recommend draining it after every every uh, trip. So if you used it for a whole week and then you're not going to go camping again for a couple weeks, um, drain the water out of it. You don't want it to sit in there or to get stagnant. So before you pull your plug to drain it, crack your pressure relief right here. Until all the water stops squirting out, crack it open like that. Once the water stops squirting out, snap it closed, then you can take the plug out. Other than that, clean in here and clean in there right, quite regularly. You're looking for like sawdust, not sawdust, uh, any debris. Uh, spider webs are common. Uh, I've seen some bees' nests in there. I've even seen one with a bird's nest in there. Um, well, that was just because they had broken their screen. But just keep it clean and it should last you quite a while. Outdoor shower, you have hot and cold in there. Um, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, I don't know anyone who's going to be taking actual showers outside, but if you got like kids or pets that are playing in the mud, you can spray their feet off, spray them off before you let them go inside. Slide seals, every once in a while, you're going to want to inspect them, make sure they're not dry or cracked or anything like that. If you start noticing that, you can take it in and we'll perform what's called a side, side out maintenance. And what we do is we pry, apply a seal conditioner on, this, on the seals and uh, a dry lube on these on the rails for this slide out that is also something you could buy the materials we sell those here so you could do that yourself Come over here exhaust for your furnace just keep it clean clean in here keep it clean um, if you're gonna use air be careful because you don't want to blow it debris in there even further they make screens for these they don't recommend you run them with the screens on over there another gray tank That'll just be for your kitchen sink. Hook your hose up to that. Same same deal as the back ones. Right here. This is your city water. This is where you're going to hook up water. If where you go and provides water, which uh, like 80% of the places have sites that provide water. Below well, that is to fill your onboard fresh tank. That you just rest your hose in here. You don't have to jam it in there. Just rest it in there. It'll fill up. When you start seeing water escape from around your hose or even around this this little vent right here, you're full. 
I suggest monitoring your progress on the monitoring panel and not letting it get to the point where you're squirting water out everywhere. And then just like your water heater, I recommend draining your fresh tank after every trip. You don't want water to sit in there. It'll become stagnant. So your drain for it is right up there. Here, some good information here, your VIN, tire pressure, that's what you want, 80 PSI, and then uh, tire size, if you have a blowout or something, you can uh, replace your tires. And then you got gross vehicle weight rating, uh, cargo carrying capacities, all that's on there. Coming up around front, dual 20 pound cylinders, they are filled, uh, so you don't have to worry about getting them filled. Then you do have your automatic changeover regulator, so it's pointing to this tank, if they were both to be on. They're off right now. It'll pull from this tank first. If this one were to get empty, it'll be switched to pulling from this tank automatically. However, this doesn't rotate, indicating it's switched. So just keep that in mind. And then some people think having it up and down like that is going to split the tanks evenly. No, it's one or the other. Group 24 RV Marine Grade Battery. This is a brand new battery, so you don't have to worry about that. In the winter, I recommend taking the battery completely out, storing it somewhere warmer than out in the cold. And then if it's going to be a long time between trips, I recommend using your battery disconnect. You just turn it, disconnects the battery from everything. Um, that works if you're unplugged and let's say you forgot a light, you don't want to open it all up again or you're going to step away for a while. You don't want anything using your battery while you're gone. This does charge when it's plugged in. However, if you have your battery disconnect, the chart off, the charge won't reach the battery. Coming around, you got power tongue jack. The light, kind of hard to see. You got a light up and down tell you what beats hand cranking every day of the week especially a larger trailer like this and then this is your backup where you put that tiny crank in that other compartment in case you were to lose power at the jack you can still operate your jack you got these propane tank covers we had them off because they're easier to demonstrate but they just slip on like that coming around you are pre-wired for solar let's see if i can on this these get open so little that sometimes you can't even here give me a sec there you go right there so you have to buy the furion solar kit which comes with the panels and the stuff you need and all that does is trickle charge your battery using the solar power moving around last little bit outdoor outlet it's gsci protected all your, all your GFCI outlets are on the same circuit. If one's going to trip, they're all going to trip. And then when we go inside, I'll show you the resettable outlet. And then next to that, a cable outlet. So if you wanted to have a table out here or something, you could have a TV outside, which is nice. Well, that pretty much concludes our exterior tour. We're mosey our way on the inside. You see you got this sliding glass door right here. And you got your screen door right here. So the reason the screen door is not installed is because when you are traveling, when you're towing this, you don't want the screen door on because it'll be on the outside of this. And road stuff coming up on the road can hit it. The wind might take it off. But it's really easy to put on. You got these rollers. You push up on the rails, lift the door, and it just kind of clicks in place. Very nice. Very easy. Just like you ones at home. All right. We'll kind of start our way up front. You do have a spot to mount a TV if you want a TV. There's already some coax for it. Then um, the composite cables because your DVD player or your CD player slash radio is also a DVD player. Oh, well, standard definition as you can see. And then already a mount here if you choose to have a TV. This mount is pretty universal. It'll fit a lot of different TVs. Just You are limited on size. Then you do have... This, this one up here, so if you are hooked to a auxiliary satellite on the outside, you have to swap this cable to that one right there. And then if you are using your antenna, make sure that is on like that. If you're using your cable, make sure it's off. That's just your booster for your antenna. Radio is super simple. Power on. You have different zones. So zone one is inside. So you can turn the inside off. It's just going to be the outdoor speakers. Well, you can turn zone 2 off and zone 1 on. It'll just be the inside speakers, and that's nice. So if someone's outside, 
late at night and you don't want to bother your neighbors, but you still want to jam out to some music, you can do that. Or if someone's inside taking a nap, you can jam out outside. You have buttons right here. Presets, push and hold to save your presets. Pause, play, stop, scan through your channels as well as fast forward and um, rewind. Bluetooth button, hit, you hit Bluetooth, then you look on your phone for a Fury on DV3100. Pair your phone to that. And then this is another mode button. You can cycle through auxiliary, USB. Um, um, headphone jacks is not a mode, but it does have... If you want to plug in your headphones and stand next to your radio and listen to music, you can do that. Below that, dual USB ports. And then let's see. You're fine. There we go. This will be the remote for your radio. Um, it'll also act as a remote for the DVD portion of the radio. Right below that, you have a fireplace that works off electric. So this is your power. This temperature button changes your heat. Look, low, high, off. Then you have flame. This flame button changes your level of your flame. You have a timer. You can go from half hour to, I believe, eight hours. Ooh. Then you have temperature adjusting right here. Well, the remote must have. There we go. You gotta be pointing it at the kind of the right spot. High, and then you can change temperature here. You can already feel. Oof, it's already feel it getting warm. That's what's nice about these. If it's a little chilly in the morning, it's but it's not quite cold enough to run your furnace. That that heats up almost instantly, and it'll be enough to kind of get the chill out of the air. Dual outlets either side here too. Couch turns into a bed. A little difficult to demonstrate one-handed, but you remove these cushions like that. You lift this portion of the bed up. Up and out. You know, like I said, it's very difficult to show one-handed. Then you unfold those legs. There's no detents in the legs. They just unfold the rest on the ground. And then, then you fold this back piece down and it creates a platform. Got a residential style fridge in here, which is nice. So they get cold a lot quicker than a uh, traditional RV fridge. And they have a lot more storage in there. All the lights on the slide, they turn on and off by these buttons in the center. Those ones, as well as those ones over there. You got your microwave. Your microwave is only going to work when you're plugged in. Other than that, let's turn that off because that's kind of bright. Other than that, it's just your standard microwave. Nothing really special about it. Range, or cooktop rather. Fold that open. If you want a light, you turn it to light. And twist your sparker. The gas is off, so it's not going to light right now. But you just turn it to light. You don't even have to push this in or anything. And then you just spark it. Sometimes, if you had just turned the gas on, it's going to take a little while for it to light. It's no it's no big deal for you to keep turning. Oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, you can keep clicking this. And that's going to cause no harm. No, cause no harm. And it's not going to cause any harm to having this on light. And keep clicking this until it does light. Now don't have it on light, wait, and then try to click it because you might be filling this area with gas. So it's kind of risky. And then your oven's a little bit different. In your oven, there's a pilot. You have to light that pilot with a barbecue lighter or a match. And to light that, you turn this to pilot on, push and hold. As you're pushing hold that, light that pilot. Once it's lit, you can turn it to whatever temperature you want. If you are gonna cook again in a few hours, um, you can when you turn it off, you can turn it to pilot on, shuts the burners off, leaves the pilot on. But I recommend turning it off before you go to bed or something like that. Another GFCI outlet. These blue ones controls LEDs. This one, LEDs above your slide. This one is outside LEDs underneath the awning. This one is uh, main lights. Then you have awning controls, slide room in or out, side room in or out. This one, I believe, yeah, far right one, right here. This one does that slide out. This one does this slide out. Table right here does extend out for more room. Pick, pull it out, 
lift it up, push it in. Ah, if I can do it one-handed. Give me a second. There. So you have a little bit more room to eat at. Just remember, if you are going to close this slide, um, you know you have to put that back in place so you're going to smash into that island. And then you pull it out, it'll slide down, push it right back in place. Got your breaker box right here. All your breakers for your 110 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt. So you have some 15s and a 20. Just recommend carrying some spare fuses with you, just in case. Moving along, right here, bunkhouse. Another spot for a TV in here. Controls for the slide out in here, lights in here. Plenty of storage up here, as well as underneath there. Jackknife couch, so this is set in bed mode. If you're gonna use it as a couch, I recommend you folding this up. This will lock, these will lock in there, like that. And it doesn't matter which way you transport this up or down. Then your couch, this is just a jackknife, so lift up underneath. Push in. You also have storage underneath there. Push in and down. And you got a nice couch. I do believe, let's see if I... Yep. And then the middle portion folds down for cup holders. Yeah. Pretty nice and roomy here. In the second bedroom or a little entertainment area for the kids or... Even the adults. Right over here, get your thermostat controls. So turn it to cool. It's not going to run right now because we have cool on auto and we have it set to 55. It's colder than 55 in here, your AC won't turn on. But if I turn your AC to high, it'll turn on because you turned it off of auto mode. And that's basically what auto does auto regulates it to whatever temperature you have it set at to. So if I had cool on auto and I had it set to 65, once again, it's still colder than 65 in here. It's not going to turn on. Um, once it reach, reaches 65 degrees, it'll shut off, and then it'll cycle on and off to regulate that 65. That works for auto high and low. And then fan high and low is just going to keep running running it no matter what you have it set at. 55, yeah, it'll hit 55, but it'll keep going. That's why I suggest auto, because if it's cold, or not cold, sorry, rather hot and humid outside, and you keep and you're running your AC consistently, eventually it'll freeze up and shut off, and then it won't kick on again until it gets thawed out. And then you controls for your fan. That's just going to run the fan on the AC, not the actual compressor. So it'll just circulate airflow, and then you have heat. Heat goes all the way up to 90. And heat works on auto high and low too as well. Right below that, propane and carbon monoxide alarm. That's hardwired to the 12 volt system. There's no batteries you have to worry about changing. Um, as we leave, uh, conclude our tour, I'll show you, tell you more about our sa the safety equipment. Come into the bathroom. There's your resettable GFCI, so if any GFCI is tripped, that's the one you come and reset it at. Got your monitoring panel here, so you can do your water pump from here. Water heater on gas, and water heater on electric. You can run them both at once if you want to. If you are going to run electric, make sure you do have water in the water heater. And if you're running electric, make sure this switch is on, and that switch outside I was telling you guys about was on too. Then you can, then you can read battery, fresh, black, and then all your grays from here. So gray two is going to be that 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 sewer cap that was closer to the front. That's just for your kitchen sink is gray two. Black one and gray one are going to be the bathroom. Pretty simple. Shower, removable shower head. You know to get the hard hard to reach spots. Like it do give you a sunlight a little cutout for if you're taller you can stand up in there. Shower doors. These are nice. These have like magnetic strips so they lock together. But when you are traveling or transporting this, make sure you latch this closed so these doors aren't swinging around everywhere. Toilet, very simple. As long as you're pushing this pedal, it's just going to keep flushing. Then you have the controls for your light in here. And then this is your control for your fan in here. Crank the vent up this way. I always recommend running this when you're taking a hotter shower just to keep the condensation and moisture off these walls. Coming into the bedroom, 
controls for your slide out in the bedroom, lights for the bedroom, you have another outlet here, and an outlet on the other side over there. One of those clicky lights above the bed. And then a spot for TV in here. Coax outlet, regular outlet, backer right here. If you want to mount a TV, you can have an angle one. What I would do personally is have a, t have a TV with a long enough power cord or even use an extension cord, long enough coax, and set your TV on here. Because if you have your TV mounted here, and, you f and if you come in here and you open the door, you might accidentally hit your TV. That's just my my personal, the way I would do it. Plenty of storage in here. Um, we all know she's going to take most of the storage in here. Close. And then, this bed does lift up. It's on struts. Access to that same storage from the outside. And then you just push it, push it close. And then this window is going to act as an emergency exit. You can use it as a normal window. Just slide the glass open. Or you can take the screen with it. And then you jump out the back. And then I don't know if you had seen. There's another door in the back as well too. So if you need to use the restroom. You don't have to snake all the way through here. You can just come right in. And that's pretty much it for the bedroom. There is another one of these vents here. There is not a... Um, fan or anything, but there's a little vent here for it. Right, so, I said we were going to go over some of the safety stuff, so... There's our L LP detector. Fire extinguisher right there. We have smoke alarm right here. These went off 9 volt batteries. Um, so, if that starts giving those low voltage chirps, it's time for a new battery. Um, other than that... That, your LP alarm, your fire extinguisher, those all expire in 10 years. So this is a 2018, so in 2028, um, regardless of whether they've ever alarmed or they've ever gone off or you've ever had to use your fire extinguisher, replace them because that'll just give you peace of mind that when you need them, they'll work. All right, that pretty much concludes our, our virtual tour of the KZ Sportsman. I hope you guys get good use out of it and really enjoy it.